at the risk of dying after a hip break in those that are over 60 years old, it's something alarming like a 50% chance of death over the next 15 years. Like it's absurd and you could, whatever the number is, it doesn't matter. When you look up the real ones, you're gonna be like, wow, it's just as bad as, as I exemplified there. So you, you can't afford to do that. Why do you fall when you're over 60? Well, sometimes a dog just walks out in front of you and okay, great. But the things that you can control, you can't lose your balance. Don't, like you need to train balance. Okay, great. Secondly, if you lose your balance, and you need to have the foot speed and the hand speed to move your appendages out in front of you to stop that fall from happening, right? This is a foot speed, this is a hand speed, mostly since your legs are the way that you interface with the world most of the time, we always start with our lower body, right? We can't, we can't have bad knees, can't have bad ankles, and we can't lose foot speed and power. Let's assume that freak accident happened, you had um, a slip and you had the ability to get your foot out in front of you when you're falling. Right? So you're tripping, you're falling forward, and then you flung your right foot out in front of you and you planted it to stop yourself from falling so you didn't smash your hip. You then need to have the eccentric strength to stop yourself from collapsing on that foot. So you had the foot speed to get it out there, but did you have enough strength to actually stop yourself from falling? Physical strength uh, is one of the strongest predictors of mortality of any metric in the entire world. The only one that is sort of close to it is your VO2 max. Those things will outpredict how long you're going to live more than almost any metric. If you look at them stacked up directly against clinical, uh, traditional clinical risk factors, uh, blood pressure, um, cardiovascular disease markers, coronary artery disease, smoking, diabetes, things like that, those are all bad. But leg strength and VO2 max typically will predict survival rate more so than those other markers. There's actually a couple of studies um, that come to mind. One of them out of Jonathan Meyer's lab, the famous one. 750,000 people in the studies, like big studies. And over the course of it, I think 174,000 people died. You know, and these are retrospective wow. studies and stuff like that, right? But what you're looking at is like who stayed alive and who didn't. Not like a surrogate marker, not some sort of like direct marker, right? And you will definitely see uh, what's called a hazard ratio, which is to say, okay, 1.0 is neutral. Below one is reduced risk of dying. Above one is increased risk. And you'll look at things, um, you'll, you'll see smoking and diabetes put you at an HR of like 1.3, 1.4. So 30% increase hazard ratio, 40% increase. It's not good. And then you start to see the things like VO2 max, and you start seeing like 4X increases. 5x increases. Like they just outpace smoking and diabetes by massive amounts. It's not like uh, smoking is 30% and VO2 max is 40%. It's like smoking is 30% and VO2 max is 300%.